Okay, so this is part two of the magnetic field at the center of a solenoid. Um, so I ran out of time on that last video. Remember that the, that this is a solenoid, just a, a wire wrapped around a, a tube, a paper, maybe a cardboard tube. Lots of wire though. Um, I don't want to give you the idea that this is going to be, you know, 10 loops. It, it's, for what I'm deriving, you, you want it to be lots and lots of loops. And um, so the, the field looks like this inside of a solenoid. And, um, you know, I never told you this, but there's a right, there's two right-hand rules you can use to get the direction of the field inside of a solenoid. Um, one of them is you can take your fingers this time and curl your fingers in the direction the current's going, and your thumb will show you the field direction inside. So you see how there's dots here and there's X's here? Well, if the dots are coming out at us, then the field is curling like that, um, around like that. See how my fingers are going into the page on this side and dots on that side? So my thumb is pointing down, so that's the direction of the field. So the field is down. That's one way to get that, sure enough. Now that's only for inside the solenoid. Outside it's going to be the other way. It's going to be up. But it's a lot stronger inside than outside. That's one way to do that. Another way to do that is um, you could just use one segment, just one wire. See how there's, this is an X? And then you could use your the other right-hand rule that we've already learned, and that is um, you put your thumb in the direction of the current. So your thumb in the direction of the current is this way, putting my thumb in the direction. And so you curl your fingers around. And so that tells you that the field in there is down. Let's try this side. This is current coming out at us. So, yeah, that's down. So whichever way you want to use, whatever way works better for you. So one way is to just, um, you, you, your fingers are actually the direction of the current. And that tells you the, the field that is down in there. The other way is just look at a, a, one segment of the wire. Okay, well, we did that. And we, um, we're, we're trying to find the magnetic field at the center and so I drew an Amperian loop, and if I want to know the field, say right here, um, I drew an Amperian loop, and um, the current that's going through the Amperian loop, I have two of these wires. So I didn't just say it's I going through there, it's 2I. And then I did a path integral. I started, I did a path integral B dot DL from here, to, from A to B, and then from B to C, and then from C to D, and then a final path integral from of B dot DL from D to A. Now, when you do that, they all, all, three of those are going to cancel, and the, there's only going to be one left over. Now, the reason that three of them will cancel is because um, when you go from B to C, you, the your the B, the magnetic field B, is perpendicular to DL at every point along the way. And so the dot product, the B dot DL goes to zero. Same thing with going from D to A, the dot product goes to zero. The reason why it goes to, why this integral is zero is because this is infinity. This is, you're way far away. So B is zero. So you get, you get rid of three of these paths. And you're just left with the integral of B dot DL from A to B. Now, um, we're going to argue then that in that case, the, the central case, you see how the DLs are this way? And so is B. So I can get rid of the dot product for that one. So I get rid of the, I'll bring this on the other side, mu naught 2i is equal to, now this is, I'm going to get rid of the dot product because B is the same direction as DL. This is no longer a closed path. I'm going from A to B, so I don't. I'm not putting a closed path integral there, and um, that we did that because B is parallel to DL. Okay, then um, the B. If I'm close to the center here, if I'm very close to the center, this is not going to be a very tall. In fact, let's call the height of this. Let's call the height of this H, and we're going to make that brief pretty small. And so for that little h, it's an approximation, but for that little h, do you see how the lines are pretty, whoa, whoa, 
hit the stand there. See how the lines are pretty straight in there? It's not going to be any stronger at one spot than another, approximately. And so I'm going to say B approximately is uniform in there. So I'm going to pull that B out. And then I'm just left with the DLs going from A to B. And so when I add up all those DLs, when I add up all these DLs, I'm just going to get H. That's the H. So it's just going to be B times H is equal to mu naught times 2i. I'm going to bring that H on the other side. And so B is equal to mu naught times 2 times i over h. Okay, now here's the deal. I used two loops going through there. But um, what we're going to do is we're going to, I mean, there could be five loops going through there. The way I drew this, there were only two loops going through there, so I used 2i. But let me use... Let me just use a more generic case that if my Amperian loop has n amount going through there, that this is going to turn into, this is my last equation, but that's just going to be more generically mu naught times n times i all over h, where n is the number of loops going through Amperian loop. And H is the height of the Amperian loop. Okay, so this is what they do. The number of um, loops going through divided by H, we're going to give that a new name. So the B inside of a solenoid at the center is equal to mu naught times N times I, where um, N is going to be the number of loops per length. So this is called the number it's also called the turn density. Okay, so the magnetic field inside of a solenoid then is equal to mu naught times n times i. It's funny, but remember that n is not just the number of hoops in the solenoid, it's the turn density. So it's the number of, of turns, sometimes the loops are called turns, it's the number of turns per length, or the turn density. Okay, so this n is the number of turns per length or it's sometimes called the turn density. Apparently if I double the I, I double the B. If I triple the I, I triple the B. So if I want a really strong magnetic field, I'm going to put a lot of current through a solenoid and I'd like the turn density, how, how tightly wrapped it is, I'd like that to be way up there. If it's if you got a lot of turns per per length, and you have a, a lot of current going through there, you can get some really strong magnetic fields inside solenoids. Okay, so that's the magnetic field due to a solenoid. All right, thanks.